Hi everyone, welcome back. Today's video is going to be sort of a spin-off from another video that I saw over on Angie's channel. She filmed um, a few weeks ago now, the, I think it was like holiday products, makeup products that uh, were popular back when they launched but they've kind of disappeared off the market because nobody talks about them anymore. I liked that video a lot but I wanted to change the concept for my video so this is kind of like a spoof on her video. I wanted to talk about holiday products from years gone by that I still really really love and unfortunately the way the culture is on YouTube we don't talk enough about products that we used to love because we're always focused on what's coming up next. Um, and honestly right now it's near impossible to keep up with everything that is out there and it's made me feel like I don't even want to deal with it really. There are some exceptions of course but for the most part I've been very disenchanted with a lot of holiday launches this year and it's made me love my older products more as a result. So I want to talk about stuff from previous years that I still really love. Most of the, like the bulk of this, you cannot get your hands on anymore, but I know a lot of you guys have this kind of stuff still in your collection and you might as well show it some love because you own it, you spent the money on it and there's still really good products. So with that preamble out of the way, let's get into this. I'm gonna talk about the best launch of last year for the holidays. So holidays 2018 introduced us to the Too Faced Gingerbread Spice Palette. I very much am not interested in the extra spicy palette this year because I do not feel like it's extra spicy, but I want to talk about this beauty because it is absolutely beautiful. So the Too Faced Gingerbread Spice Palette kind of took us by surprise. Um, I didn't hear anything about it and then all of a sudden it was everywhere last year. I think this was around like September and I was hell-bent on getting my hands on this as soon as possible. It took forever to come to Sephora Canada and I think I just buckled and ordered it from Ulta at the time because I was like, I need this. I need to own this. I am so enamored with the colors in here. And you know what? I am still a huge fan of this palette. I use it quite regularly and it just holds such a special place in my heart. The color story in here is very much what I want to see in a more neutral toned palette in the sense that you've got some jewel toned colors over here that are a little bit more subdued, but you've also got these beautiful colors right over here, specifically this row. Oh, that is a gorgeous row. You've got Gumdrop, which is a really bright magenta matte color. Spice is Nice is a beautiful matte orange. And then Hot Toddy is absolutely wild. That shade shifts from like, copper orange to like hot pink. It's beautiful. So those colors are really special to me and then the jewel tones over there kind of complete the rest of the palette as well as the fact that you've got some great transition colors in here. There's plenty of matte shadows. I love this thing to pieces and I had initially thought about getting a backup of this palette because they re-released it just this past July which was strange. It's like they found an extra crate of these palettes somewhere and they were like, oh, maybe we can resell it because I don't feel like they actually went out and made a new batch of it because it was such a limited launch. Anyway, I almost bought a backup of it and then I was like, don't be ridiculous. Like there's so much eyeshadow in here. I've never panned a palette before in my life. So I have this one and I treasure it very much, but I loved it so, and I still love it so much that I did consider buying a backup of it. Actually, let's stick with holidays 2018 for a little bit because there's, there were quite a few launches last year that I was really happy with and then we'll go further back in time. Okay, I've talked about this palette so much that people are probably tired of hearing about it, but <laughs> can't help myself. ColourPop Chasing Rainbows. Sadly, this just went out of stock on ColourPop's website about three weeks ago and I'm heartbroken because this thing is beautiful. When this first launched as part of ColourPop's holiday collection last year, I actually held off on it because I was like, eh, I don't need more eyeshadow. The colors were interesting, but they didn't seem that enticing to me. There it is open in case you haven't seen it yet. Um, so I kind of held off and I think I bought it after everyone kind of like tried it out and you know, the reviews I think were good. I don't remember them being terrible. I don't feel like anybody ever really has anything terrible truly to say about ColourPop's pressed eyeshadows. But I waited a while to buy this just because I didn't think I needed it. And then when I finally caved and bought it and tried it out, I was like, okay, there is something so special about this thing. And yes, it's sort of a rainbow, but not entirely. But the colors in here complement each other 
so well. So well. I took this with me on vacation when I went to England and Ireland back in May. So I wore this for 10 days straight and I tell you what, I never got bored of this thing. Not once did I get bored of it. And I came back and I think I actually used it for the entire next week when I was back in Canada. It is beautiful. Every time I do an eye look with this, I'm just always happy with it. I've never had a combination out of this where I was like, ugh, you're kind of crappy. It just always seems to work. And I really feel like the color selection will work for a lot of people too, because I mean, you've got some basic browns over here, as well as some purples, which people seem to gravitate more towards in terms of a color if they're not used to wearing color. But then you've got all these beautiful blues, you've got this silver, the gold, it's just really lovely. And I'm so sad that it's no longer available because I can't shut up about this thing. I've been talking about it literally all year and it will 100% be in my favorite palettes of 2019, but it's gone. <laughs> I have a Nemo down here. He's leaving now, all right. Okay, another palette from 2018. Man, I didn't really realize that I'd chosen so much from 2018 for this video, but I guess last year was a banger for me. It just really worked out in terms of makeup launches. Quo. This is their Highlight and Glow palette, and it is hands down my favorite product that they make. Quo is a home brand for Shoppers Drug Mart, so you can only buy it in Canada, and you can only buy it on Shoppers Drug Mart's either website or in their retail stores. And this is a highlighting palette that has different colored reflex, which is always enticing to me. I am not over the different colored highlighter phase. I just still think it's a beautiful, I was gonna say trend. It's not trend anymore, but I just love different colored highlighters because I feel like it can really change up your look. I like to have a contrasting color or a complementary color on my cheeks in comparison to my eyeshadow. And I was really excited that Quo put out a palette like this because they can be a very safe brand. They tend to stick to neutral tones. They tend to stick to colors that are more muted um, and just a little bit more sheer overall. So when I saw that they put out this palette and then when I tried it out and discovered that I loved it, I was super excited. And then I was really upset because it was a limited edition holiday item. Thankfully, Quo has actually released this as a permanent product in their range now and I could not be happier. I'm just so excited to see a drugstore brand that's Canadian that is putting out something unique and interesting. Like this highlighter up here is this beautiful shimmery peach color. This one down here is more of an icy lavender. You've got a more blue toned one up here. This sort of goldy white one is gorgeous as well. And honestly, I can get away with wearing these darker shades down here. The ring light is kind of washing it out the ring light is kind of washing out these colors, but if I tilt it that way, you can see that they're quite deep, but they actually work on my skin tone, which is great. So I get a lot of use out of this entire palette and I'm just happy that it's permanent now because I was recommending this a lot and then I was like, well, there's no point because no one can buy it anymore. And then they launched as a permanent product. I do think the packaging is a little bit different. I think it's cardboard, but I don't feel like it's a see-through lid anymore. But I mean, it's the same product on the inside. Okay, the last item I'm gonna talk about for 2018 um, is a bunch of liquid lipsticks, but they're actually a result of previous years of liquid lipsticks. So these are the Too Faced Melted Mattes. Um, and these ones in particular are the mini sizes. And they came in like a four pack that was called something like Christmas Docking, yeah, I don't really remember the name. Anyway, these are minis, which is great because I'm not busting through an entire full-size lipstick anytime soon. And um, I have to admit, although I'm not the biggest fan of the Too Faced Melted Matte formula over the years, I'm just, I'm just really getting tired of liquid lipsticks, to be honest. They're quite drying overall, and they don't tend to relayer very well. A cream lipstick is definitely more up my alley, but there is something to be said for these liquid lipsticks. The smell is different on all of them. I love the colors that were in this collection. Um, I'm wearing actually Sugar Cookie right now. It's just an easy, easy to wear nude. It matches every colorful eye look that I throw at it. And I'm really happy with that one. And then there is Pumpkin Spice, which I mean, I'm sold. Pumpkin Spice, anything, I'm happy with it. The color is like a muted orangey brown. Looks great with a whole bunch of fall eye looks. And then the other one here is Hot Buttered Rum, um, which they've actually made like a mini palette themed, I guess, around this shade um, for holidays this year, which I just reviewed on my channel. These are 
quite nude overall, but I like that the tones are a little bit different um, because sometimes I'll wear like pumpkin spice if I got a little bit more of a warm toned eye. I'll wear hot buttered rum if it's a little bit more brown. Um, and then sugar cookie I match with like every single colorful eyeshadow look. The only shade I don't tend to wear very much is Cinnamon Bear just because, mm, I don't know, I want a cream lipstick if I'm gonna be wearing a red one or a red shade. So I don't reach for this one as much, but these were absolutely wonderful and I've been wearing them year round. <laughs> So these are not definitely not just a holiday item for me. The thing that's fun about these though is that they were created as a result of people loving the holiday melted mattes from previous years. And the one that initially kicked it off was the melted matte in Candy Cane. Oh, this color. I, wow. It is so, so pretty. It's a bright, hot pink with a lot of red in it. It smells glorious it smells exactly like candy canes and these these smell exactly like what they say they are too by the way so good I can't believe that they never brought this one back actually because to me this is my favorite color and favorite smell it is so nice and really I wear this still constantly so I'm really happy with that one and then the year after they launched candy cane they came out with a gingerbread man and they came out with gingerbread girl and then they followed it with the, like the melted matte minis so I'm like this whole range I'm here for it the ones without the scents don't really entice me as much because I am very much uh, about the smells on these things and you know it's really curious that they didn't launch any more this year I thought it was kind of strange like at least re-release this pack because it was quite popular but no, they, they didn't come out with any more, but I'm perfectly content with these. I think they're fantastic. Okay, so I'm done talking about 2018, although apparently 2018 was quite a special year. Let's roll it back a little bit further. So I don't actually remember the year on this one, um, but I think it's the only time that Hourglass has actually released a trio blush palette. And now that I've said that, I must be wrong. Anyway, this is the one and only that I ever picked up, and this is the Ambient Lighting Blush Palette. Uh, and this one contains Luminous Flush, Incandescent Electra, and Mood Exposure. And I initially held off on buying this one because Hourglass is super pricey. I have bought one of their single blushes before, and I almost choked on that price tag because I think it was... Was it 40 bucks? 45? I don't know. It was way too much money and it made me a little bit uncomfortable with that kind of price tag. So I will never run through blush. I'm convinced that it will never happen, which is why I was more excited to see Hourglass release a blush palette like this because the pans are so much smaller. And even though the price tag is super expensive, at least I know I'm getting a little bit more variety in this. And I already knew based on that one single blush that I have, um, that I really like hourglass blushes. I think they're one of the most seamless blushes to apply. I can have a tendency to over blush my cheeks. I just go heavy handed in, but there is something about hourglass blushes and it's because there's a stripey powder in there that basically prevents me from going too overboard. So I hugely appreciate that. Um, and because of that, they just look so seamless on the face. So when they released this, I think I kind of held off from buying it because it was so expensive. This was probably like, I don't know, 75 or 80 bucks Canadian. It, it was a lot of money, but I broke down over time because I realized how much I loved the single blush that I already had. And this one had three shades that I didn't own. So it seemed like good value at the time. And you know what? I still agree. I reach for this fairly frequently. I wouldn't say every week, but with enough consistency that I'm happy that I spent the money on this. And it's made me sort of look at Hourglass's other blush palettes this year and been like, hmm, do I need anything from them? I've basically convinced myself that I don't, but I do think it's good value for money if you're buying it in a set sort of like this with more variety because you're just getting more shades and that's what I like having. So this was such a great purchase. To me, I definitely wear the Incandescent Electra shade the most. It's a beautiful coral color. And then Mood Exposure to me is very similar to Tarte's Exposed. So I, I wear that quite frequently, um, mostly during, during the uh, fall months and then Incandescent Electra is a bit more of a summer shade to me. But I was really pleased with this, especially given the fact that I held off for so long on purchasing it. And then when I got it, I was like, yeah, you know what? This is worth the money. And it's proven to be that way even more so over the years because I still reach for this thing. 
Okay, in talking about another blush palette, I've talked about this one a lot too, so it may not come as a surprise. This was Tarte's 2013 blush palette launch, and it's called Off the Cuff, and it is beautiful. So this one has four blushes in here and one bronzer. So this is their Park Avenue Princess Bronzer, which they're, which they're quite famous for at this point. I really like Tarte's Amazonian Clay Blush Formula. It's one of my favorites in my collection. I reach for them all the time. I have, I think it's sensual on my cheeks today. They're pretty seamless for me. I just, I really enjoy not only the application of them, um, they're a little bit stiffer in the pan. Uh, I don't really know why I like that more, but I do and uh, they just blend out really nicely on the skin. And when I got my hands on this, I was so excited because the variety is fantastic. I feel like in recent years, Tarte has kind of launched a lot of blush palettes that look way too similar to each other. Like there was a 10 pan blush palette one year that I feel like five blushes looked like all shades of coral and then the other five looked like all shades of pink. And it just didn't provide enough variety for me because this palette has that variety. So you're getting a super bright coral shade here. You're getting a more muted mauve tone here. This one is a little bit more orangey um, neutral. And then you're getting a bright pink blush. I mean, in terms of blush spectrum, that's it for me. I really don't need more, although I do have more, because this covers the whole gamut of shades that I could really want to pair with any eyeshadow look. And then to pair it with a bronzer as well, I mean, this is the perfect travel palette. I have brought this to at least 10 different countries because it is so compact and it has so much variety in this little palette that bringing any other palette on vacation with me almost seems like a stupid idea because it'll take up too much space and this has everything I need. And unfortunately, since they put this out, Tarte has not launched, to my recollection, another blush palette with this much variety alongside a bronzer. And I keep asking for it. I think I've tweeted at them in years gone by, like, please come out with something similar to this again. And they haven't done it. I think they've launched it with like a highlighter or maybe the blushes were too similar or there was no bronzer. And I was just like, guys, you're never gonna beat this palette. This was so special. And honestly, I'm surprised I haven't hit pan on the bronzer yet because it's got a massive dip in it. Um, but no pan yet. All right, the very last item that I'm gonna talk about is probably gonna enrage some people, but this is honestly the most epic holiday launch that I have in my collection, so I can't not talk about it. And uh, unfortunately, it's the Kat Von D Mi Vita Loca Remix palette. And um, I just wanna put this out there because I know discussions have been had before, but I don't support Kat Von D anymore ever since she came out with that statement that said that she wouldn't be vaccinating her child. Um, I am in support of vaccinations and I think it's really stupid and ignorant to put out misinformation out there that vaccinations could be harmful. And I think it's a really terrible thing that she's done that on such a huge platform. Like she has so many followers that she's giving this type of information to and I think it's, it's really unfortunate. So I won't buy her products anymore. But I mean, we can't not talk about the fact that this was pretty much life-changing for holiday palettes back when this launched. And I don't remember the exact year, it might've been 2014. So I'm sure you've all seen it and it annoys some people that we continue to talk about this palette. But man, what a wonderful launch this was. I, it was just so exciting to see a rainbow palette displayed like this in like this record I mean it's supposed to be like a record um, that you pull out it, it is cumbersome it's an awkward and annoying palette to use and I don't reach for it as much as I should just because the packaging is so obnoxious really but there is no denying how beautiful this palette is and how wonderful the colors in here are to use. And I still reach for this thing. I know people have said, you know, like, oh, it was hyped so much and it really wasn't worth all that hype. And people have bought it recently and been like, yeah, it's just a rainbow palette. And yeah, okay, maybe now it's just a rainbow palette. But when this launched, this kind of thing did not exist. I don't think Visart had their Editorial Brights palette out yet. Um, bright colors on the market were not as readily accessible and other than buying like single eyeshadows at MAC or something. So when this came out, I was just elated. I was so excited to see my sort of aesthetic in a palette that was from a brand that I really enjoyed at the time. And the formula 
was fantastic too. I mean, you're getting everything with this palette. There are mattes, there are satins, there are shimmers. You're getting a full rainbow spectrum and then you're also getting this neutral wheel in the middle that helps to ground any look. And I, I really don't think it can be understated how impactful this palette was on the makeup community as a whole. I mean, I know people are tired of hearing about it now because it's been years later and we won't shut up about it. But this kind of introduced color, I feel like, to the makeup community as a more consumer available item. And it also uh, kind of launched this idea that massive palettes are welcome at the holidays. So I mean, I was really happy with this. I continue to be happy with this palette. Um, I'm not happy with her, but I mean, this was a different era at the time and I can accept that and not chuck it in the bin because man, it was pricey too. I think it was like $70 six years ago, five years ago. So that was a lot of money for a palette. I mean, palettes more regularly now are like 70 bucks, but back then they were mostly all around the $50 mark. And funny story with this, I bought it as soon as it came out because I knew I had to have it. And then I think like a month later, I got sent it from PR, which was really funny because by the time I got it from PR, it was sold out everywhere. So, I mean, what am I gonna do? Tell people to go buy it when they can't? Uh, although I think I had already discussed it on my channel. But um, yeah, this one is very special to me. And I think it is special to anybody who did buy it during that time frame. If you pick it up now, you might not think it's that exciting just because there are other things on the market that are similar. But yeah, this was a very epic launch. So anyway, that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you found it interesting to hear about the makeup products that I still love from past holiday years because I think it's important to remember that we don't have to be keep buying new things. There are tons of things that I love from previous collections that I continue to use and still make me really happy. So now I wanna turn it over to you. I want you to tell me something from a previous holiday collection or even like a limited edition collection, it doesn't have to be for the holidays, that you still love and adore and use constantly because I want more people to play with their collections that they already have and heck, maybe you'll jog my memory for something that I've got sitting in my collection. All right, that's gonna be it for this one. Thank you so much for joining me and I will talk to you next time. Bye.